We're going to have to use lots of graphs today. I'm going to resize this again so we can see it. If I just drag position onto a graph icon, it will automatically bring in the one run that I had. If I record a new run, it will just automatically be put into that graph. The graphs have lots of tools, scale to fit. We can change an axis like this. We can move the origin around by just grabbing the axis. Again, grab the scale and we can change the scale. Uh, there's lots of tools. Many of these statistical tools work with whichever run is selected in the legend. So make sure you're careful with that first. If you double click on the graph, you can turn on lots of other options that you'll need during the lab to highlight different things. Oftentimes it will be very important to show legend symbol and also on the legend to show measurement name because you're going to have lots of different uh, measurements, kinetic, potential, total energy, etc. And again, that's just in here under legends and under appearance. At times you're going to want to group measurements onto one graph. And so you could say group by unit of measure. Let's say you measured three different things in millijoules. This way they would all appear in one graph. Axis settings, here's where you could manually change the scale factor on the graph. It's where you could lock the origin position if you desired to. Under tools, I'll come back to this in a minute, there's this one tool right here, which is the smart tool. And I could choose that if I put my mouse in the upper right corner. I'm choosing a region and it tells me rise, rise and run. If you double click here on the graph and just go into tools, you can change your delta cursor format, that's the dragging that we just did, and say hey give me y over x with the result. And that saves a little bit of time in calculating and it's a live calculation. So it just shows you the size of your box and it shows you what the rise over run is equal to as a ratio in decimal form. The graphs can be used just momentarily like this, and it's a good idea just to bring up a graph if you want to explore some data. To bring in a graph on a workbook like we showed earlier, you can bring in a display in the right hand side as long as you've shown tools within the display menu. And then you can choose graph from the display choices. Right here we can just click on this Y axis and choose position. If we come over here and drop velocity, we'll see position and velocity. And then we could just simply resize our graph. To bring data within a graph, just turn it on and off with the data menu. But that's done per graph. So now I've selected the velocity graph and I can turn run2 on and come up here and run2 on. We're not stuck with using time as our basis on the x-axis. We can choose something else. Like let's do position uh, versus position on the x. So of course we'll have a one-to-one -one relationship and here we have something else that you'll probably use at some point. Maybe not velocity versus, oops, position. There we go. That's what I wanted to see. But you might have a use for having something other than time as your X basis. There are lots of tools up here in the graph. The fit tool, um, again, is going to be applied to the selection of data. There's a text tool that you can click on a data point and type some text and then turn on a pointer if you wanted to and then move this text box around. It's a really good idea if you have more than one text box to um, turn off the border and the background just to make this more readable on the graph. And again you can turn data on and off with this button. The statistics will be performed oftentimes on whatever is chosen within the, within the legend if you have more than one run. Make sure that you're careful of what it is you're plotting and again you can just plot something else by bringing in another one. And they're just telling me that I don't have enough room on my screen because I have to change my resolution. Let's say I don't want the position graph anymore. I can just select it and remove it and say remove and now it's gone. Be careful though that you don't select data first and then remove because then you actually create an editable copy and that will create a mess over here. And what was I going to do? Oh yeah, let's just remove. I'm going to hit delete this time instead of hitting the X and it'll just remove one of the runs from the graph. Okay, and now it's gone. If I don't want a data run at all, 
like let's say I yeah sure I want it in the display I don't want it in the display or I don't want it in the experiment let me put it that way if I don't want run 2 at all to be saved I just highlight it in the summary window and hit delete on the keyboard and now it goes away it's gone from the graph and it's gone from the experiment as well sometimes though it's persistent and so you have to highlight it somewhere else and hit delete and remove that as well those are the basics of working with a graph if you want to highlight a graph so it's a lighter border you can actually choose copy and then go to another workbook page and just paste it in and all the formatting that you had chosen for that graph will still exist whatever you put into this graph will not appear on this graph unless you bring it in specifically on this workbook page so the graph of each workbook page is independent which is different from this graph